All right, Alexander, let's do a quick video um, on what's going on in Australia, in Victoria. And we wanted to, to, to do this video because uh, the words coming out of Victorian Premier Dan Andrews are chilling, to say the least. I mean, I listened to a statement that he gave as uh, Victoria appears to be prepping to come out of a two-month lockdown. Two months this is on top of all the other lockdowns they had. They're coming out of a two-month lockdown, and Premier Dan Andrews gave some remarks on Sunday about future restrictions, which will apply only to the people that have not gotten the jab. And let me read you his quote, and I will put a link to a video so you guys, so everyone can hear exactly what he said. So I'll put a link to that underneath this video. But here's a quote from Dan Andrews. He said, "There is going to be a jabbed economy." And you get to participate in that if you have taken the jab. We're going to move to a situation where to protect the health system, we are going to lock out, to lock out people who have not taken the jab. He also said, if you're making the choice to not get the shot, then you're making the wrong choice. To be quite honest, Alexander, that second statement, if you've if you're making the choice to not get the shot, you're making the wrong choice. When I heard that, I was just kind of like, who are you to tell people what choices are right for them and wrong for them? And I was actually more offended at that comment than the fact that he's looking to build a divided society. But what do you make of those statements from uh, Premier Dan Andrews? This guy has said a lot of provocative things, but yeah. I listened to his statement, and once again, I'll put the video down below so everyone can hear him speak and his mannerisms. And I thought this guy's got full authoritarianism. I mean, well, it's moves about I mean, that was my immediate reaction. He's becoming absolutely. I mean, he's become incredibly. I mean, it's incredibly aggressive. The language he's using is incredibly aggressive. The tone he's using is incredibly aggressive. It, it, it is, in fact, becoming not just authoritarian it is becoming coercive because that's what he's doing he's telling people look if you want to participate in the economy you're going to accept this and if you don't well you're going to be actually severely punished and be your fault i mean that's that's how he's presenting it he's not trying to win people over He's not trying to say to them, you know, you've got to, you know, we, we, you know, we strongly encourage you to take this because, you know, if you don't, there's going to be all kinds of problems and repercussions. And we can confirm to you that this is, you know, working well and all that. He's not trying to persuade people. He's trying to bully them. And he's doing it in a most aggressive way and a very coercive way. And he, on the one hand, he doesn't feel able or confident to pass legislation that might make it obligatory or compulsory because clearly he doesn't feel he has that kind of political support and there might be, for all I know, constitutional issues about doing that in Australia. So on the one hand, he wants to go on pretending that it's voluntary, but in reality, he is using the entire mechanisms of power, if you like, to coerce people into doing something that they might not otherwise choose to do. So he is, in effect, forcing people and doing so in a very offensive and aggressive way. What do you make of the fact that uh, you have a premier looking to create a divided economy, just coming right out and openly saying that we're going to have a society where people who have taken this thing get to participate? And I guess he means... Once again, going to the supermarket, going to restaurants, going to, to cafes, going to events, uh, riding the metro, the bus, etc. Just living a normal life, pre coof And he's saying, if you haven't decided to take this thing, you get to participate in none of that. Zero of it. What, is, what does that tell you? What, what does that mean for, for Australia? What does that mean for the world well, when someone as I goes said, down it, this it, path? It, 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 well, first of all, it, it is clearly another step towards a social credit system. I mean, let, let's be straightforward about that. I mean, that's, that is what it amounts to. But not just that, of course, but it's not just creating divisions. And, and those, I am sure, they will look to seal into electoral divisions also. I mean, they will 
want to shift the entire political narrative into, you know, those who take and those who don't, those who take are the people who are the good people who support, we rely upon those who don't, they're not the so, they're the not so good people, they're people we want to push into the edges and into the peripheries of societies and that sort of thing, which is again very much a social credit system with a political dimension. But what it also shows is a society, a world, which is becoming ever more authoritarian, with leaders now openly talking in authoritarian and coercive terms to their own people. And they're using the the mechanisms of the economy in order to put pressure on people. It's something I've never seen happen before and never imagined I would ever see in my lifetime. But that's what they're doing. They're They're using economic pressures to mould people to their way of thinking on, on, on one topic. And, of course, who knows, before long they'll be doing it with others too. So social credits, growing authoritarianism, economic remodelling, that's the world we're heading towards. Yeah, when I, when I heard the statement that he said, um, you know, you have a choice to make, and if you, make, and if you choose not getting the, the shot, you're making the wrong choice. You're making, and you're going to pay the price. That's essentially what he said. You're making the wrong choice, and I'm going to punish you. I thought of like a, it was like a dear leader moment, like something out of yeah. North Korea, yeah. where like the leader of North Korea is basically saying, "You're my children, and I'm going to look after after you. But if you misbehave, my children, I'm going to punish you." I mean that that's kind of the vibe I got from it, and it's really funny because it really means that societies like. Australia, governments like Australia have no right anymore to lecture uh, China's and, and the North Korea's or any of these other countries, uh, the Russia's that they deem authoritarian anymore. When you hear rhetoric coming out of, out of a well, premiere like this, I mean, it's all over now. Absolutely. I completely agree with that because it, that's the point. I mean, this is such aggressive rhetoric. I mean, that it's, it, I mean, it, you know, it, 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 it takes my breath away. I should say, by the way that on its own terms, it's almost, in fact, I'm not almost, I am absolutely sure that if the real objective is to persuade people to take jabs, it's probably counterproductive. It will probably make a lot of people very angry and even more determined as a result not to take them. But, you know, that's possible. But regardless, the point is we are going towards a much more authoritarian landscape one with social credit scores, one with information controls, one with paternalistic governments which feel that they have the right to interfere in private decisions or decisions that people used to consider to be private and their own and part of their own space. So that's what we're going to see, and that's the, that's the future. And I think we ought to be grateful to this governor in, uh, was it in Australia because... As I said, he has shown us what the future is, and I don't think anybody can have any doubt about it now. I mean, I have to say again, I mean, the the tough, aggressive language and the tone of it was what really stunned me. I mean, you know, he could have done it more in sorrow than in anger type approach. I don't know that that would have made any great difference in terms of the substance of what he was saying, but he could have taken that approach. On the contrary, I got the impression almost that he was, you know, looking forward to this world, which I'm sure he is at some level. Yeah. All right. Uh, Final question. There's uh, news stories coming out that uh, Morrison is proposing to have an app installed specifically for residents of uh, Sydney, but perhaps he'll broaden it out, where if you're under quarantine, then this app will send random text messages to the people who are under quarantine or lockdown, perhaps, if he wants to really broaden it out. And those text messages will be random, and they'll say, take a picture of yourself at your home in 15 minutes so we can verify that you're there. And if that photo is not sent via this app, then the police come to you to your door. My point on all of this is this. We hear statements like this from Andrews. We hear that apps like, like this one, that Morrison may be proposing. Once again, I'll, I need to kind of double and triple check that. But that's not the point. You're hearing a lot of stories like this coming out of Australia. And I really believe that it has damaged brand Australia. 
oh. to a point where it cannot be repaired, or at least it's going to take decades to repair it. And I say brand Australia because Australia really was a country that had a brand around it, and that brand led to a lot of tourism, led to a lot of goodwill. People looked at Australia, and they, and they had a very clear picture what the Australian lifestyle and uh, mindset was. Mm. And, and it was a positive picture, a very positive picture. I would, I would say that brand Australia as a country yeah. was super positive in the eyes of the world, Absolutely. of the international community. That's all been done away with now, hasn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely, it's been trashed. Because again, I mean, the other thing I'd say is not only this authoritarian, not is what you were saying. And I, I should stress again, I, I don't know that you know what you said about the app is necessarily the case because I haven't seen it corroborated. But nothing about nothing any longer would would surprise me. I mean, that is intrusive beyond anything I can imagine. I come back to what I often said: if you're talking about human rights law. There is the, always the concept of proportionality which underpins it, and that isn't just disproportionate, that trashes the whole concept of proportionality and therefore human rights. Well, all that is astonishing, and it's unbelievable that we're getting into these kind of things. And talking about brand Australia, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, especially here in Britain, we'd always imagined that Australia which, uh, you know, was uh, the place where a lot of British people emigrated to, was a country where people prized freedom, where they prized individual liberty, where they enjoyed open spaces, open spaces of the sort we didn't have, of course, in Britain, where people enjoyed a, 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 a pleasant, agreeable, free lifestyle, which was very attractive to lots of people. And it's come as a profound shock to many people in Britain, myself, by the way, included that this is not going to be the case and that we are finding ourselves in a situation where there's even stories about apps like that, even if they're not true. And there are governors coming out and lecturing and threatening their people in the way that we've just discussed on this program. I mean, that is a profound shock to many people and it's a profound shock to me as well. Yeah. I just wonder, how did they end up going down this, this dark hole? Well, you know, I think it's part of the pattern that we've seen working out in the West for some time. It began with a vengeance in the 90s. And it's been gaining traction since. And, you know, the problems came last year with the pandemic. And, of course, that's turbocharged this process. But, you know, the trends were already there. And they go back, I think, you have to really go back to what happened in the 90s. Something happened in the 90s, which is not completely easy to understand. But I think that's where this all originates from. All right. We'll uh, leave it there. Guys, go to the Durant Shop, 10% off. Use the code Real News. Super U Odyssey Rumble Bitch Shoot. You'll find our videos there. And of course, check out the Durant.locals.com. Definitely plug into the Durant.locals.com. All the links down below. Take care.